Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tech Examined. I am your host, Michael Panetta, and tonight we're taking a look at the Zopo C2. It's an Android phone, and, um, well, the title doesn't say horrible in it, so maybe I actually liked it? I'll have to find out. All right, guys, so CoolIcool.com was nice enough to send this out to me for review. Uh, you know, I don't review a whole lot of phones other than the ones that I buy, and typically when I buy those, it's more or less something that I really want to try out and I'm really interested in. But, you know, I went into this thinking, you know, I I'm probably not going to like this. It's probably going to be a cheap knockoff, and, you know, something along those lines. But you know what? I'm pleasantly surprised at the way that this turned out. Now, I don't necessarily like to read specs, but I just want to give you guys a quick rundown on what we got. Everything will be listed down below as far as uh, things that get into the little nitty-gritty, but I just kind of want to give you guys a quick shot and uh, give you the information that I think is kind of important. This thing is running a quad-core 1.2 uh, gigahertz uh, processor. Uh, it is 16 gig, expandable up to 64, a 5 inch screen, which is huge. And uh, good news, it's 1920 by 1080, 1 in 1 gig of RAM, actually running Jelly Bean 2.0. And uh, it has a 13 megapixel camera on the back, 5 on the front, and a 2000 uh, milliamp battery, not too bad. Uh, I was able to kill it. But it did last me most of the day, so it isn't any worse or any better than the phones that I've uh, tried out. But uh, it definitely is uh, pretty quality, and I was definitely surprised with that. Now, this does have a dual SIM in it. Now, what does that mean? I did a little looking around because I'll be the first to admit, I not know a whole lot about it, but it actually is pretty cool. You can take, uh, if you've got multiple SIMs, you're someone that's got a work phone and a personal phone, you can actually take those SIMs if they're compatible put them in here and then you're able to jump back and forth uh, between the sims so you can actually use one phone but accomplish two things now without getting too much into it i read a pretty cool article from someone online when i was looking it up i'll put that down below he went through a multitude of things that you could use the uh, dual sim for or what he felt they were important because he was a dual sim user so uh, if you want to learn more about that you can hit it down below and of course if you want to check out anyone else you can type in dual sim on Google and you can find out the information. Now one of the things that people tend to care less about in the geek world tech community is uh, phone usage on it because we all communicate not by phone. So when we end up do using the phone, we're going, wow, this thing really isn't that good. Uh, I thought the phone was actually pretty decent. Uh, now of course, like I said, I am uh, using this on the straight talk plan. Uh, no drop calls, uh, no problems uh, talking to people. The speakerphone worked well. Uh, people heard me okay. It wasn't any issues. Like they could tell I wasn't on, you know, any other phone or, or house phone. They had really had no problems with it. No problems with uh, the network using the phone, uh, sending messages out to people via text or sending photos. Everything worked fine as far as the data portion went for using the phone side and sending out messages. Okay, so now for the design of the phone. I was pleasantly surprised for a brand that I have never heard of. Now, maybe you have heard of it and you're like, oh, yeah, they've been around for a while. But it's not something that is out there for the world to see. But the design is very nice. As we take a look around this, you have a nice uh, aluminum finish around the side here. It may not necessarily be aluminum, but it definitely looks like brushed aluminum. And, uh, you know, it, the, the phone is pretty solid, so I can't say whether it is or isn't because it feels really good in the hand being such a large device. You have your sleep-awake button on the right-hand side here, which you're not necessarily worrying about reaching your hand over the top, or if you're too low, you can always turn that on and turn it off. Sweeping across the bottom here, you have your microphone, and then you've got your micro USB on the bottom there. Coming across the side here uh, that has the flip portion, you open that up. Uh, clear across the bottom, you've got your uh, volume rockers on the top, and then coming across the top here, you have your headphone jack. Coming across the back here, you have your 13 megapixel camera along with the flash to the right. Pictures turn out pretty well. Uh, I'm going to have a video on that separately uh, going head to head with the iPhone 5. And uh, down the bottom here, you've got your Zopo logo 
and then uh, you have a cutout for your speaker. Now a couple things about the screen itself uh, being the 5 inch screen. Uh, it does have a Corning uh, Gorilla Glass 2. I feel that there are a lot of fingerprints on this more than usual. Uh, I find myself cleaning it all the time. Um, definitely not as, uh, you know, as slick as I find with the iPhone and even the Galaxy S4. Um, I just feel like I'm cleaning it all off. It's a very durable glass. It looks great when it's clean, but I would definitely suggest a uh, screen shield or a screen protector, something to give it a little more slide to it, because I don't feel like it is exactly as smooth as it could be. Now, that's not to say that the display does not look absolutely gorgeous, uh, and, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with a 10, 1920 by 1080 screen uh, on here. And uh, the colors pop. They look good. And uh, pleasantly surprised uh, with how that looked. Now, the one thing that did bother me a little bit was at the bottom your, uh, your capacitive buttons or your touch buttons across the bottom here. You have your menu, your home, and your back. Well, they're not lit up. And uh, when they do light up, they were very, very faint. And uh, it's nothing I could really see when I was using the phone. I did ask the website about this, and unfortunately they said that's the design of the phone. Nothing comes up. So for some of you, you actually may like that, that nothing lights up and it just stays completely black. But I kind of like them popping up, you know, just to see that they were there and you know. But I guess once you start learning and you use it and you really do, you don't really look at it. But anyone who's never used the phone before might look at it and go, okay, what do I do next? Now, as I mentioned earlier, the battery was pretty decent. Uh, not any better or any worse than I, any phone I used out there. Uh, I think it may have been a little bit better than the Samsung Galaxy S4, but uh, there were reasons for that because uh, I may not necessarily have used that properly based upon the comments that I got in that video. But I was able to kill this at some points during the day, and then there were other times it did last me through the entire day. But I found that once you use the phone more than about three, three and a half, four hours, well, let's say three to four hours, is when I really found that the battery started draining. This certainly uh, will go in standby for days at a time. And uh, that's actually pretty good if you're not using it a whole lot. And uh, when I first got it, I didn't have the uh, card for it yet. And it certainly lasted you know, almost the whole week without uh, having a SIM in there and just using the Wi-Fi. Now, as far as the operation of the phone, I am using Straight Talk on this. But I did uh, find the experience of pure Android 4.2 definitely a lot more pleasant than using the uh, TouchWiz version on the Galaxy S4, as you guys saw. Now, you know, the screen absolutely looked gorgeous, as I mentioned, and uh, I had no problem using the uh, device itself. It was very snappy, very quick. Every once in a while, I would tap on an icon and it wouldn't open up, whether that was me not hitting it properly or just whatever. I'm not sure if it was the design of the phone's internals not responding. Every once in a while, that would happen, but I think that happens on every phone that you use. It just has a little bit of a hiccup where you may wake it up, but it may not necessarily be awake. But beyond that, it wasn't to the point where I was tapping it and tapping it and tapping it, as I've seen on phones in the past. So for an unknown phone, uh, definitely impressed with this. Uh, you know, you got the bigger names out there. You end up spending six, seven hundred dollars for a, pro a phone that's not on contract, where you get these for a couple hundred dollars. And uh, if you're someone that's good with uh, booting or rooting, and uh, you can keep this up to date and get the latest and greatest for it, I don't see why not, especially for a lot of people that don't necessarily have the money uh, to go out there and do that or want a contract uh, for their phone. So I guess that pretty much wraps up what I feel about the phone. Overall, I would definitely recommend it if you're someone that wants to go out there and get a phone that is uh, unlocked uh, and take it to any carrier that you want to. Uh, I'm a little disappointed about not having LTE, but it certainly didn't slow down anything I was doing. Uh, I certainly wasn't anywhere where it didn't work. So uh, overall, I was pretty impressed with it. And uh, I must say, I, and I knew I was going to be a lot more happy with the pure Android experience on that, especially with some of those people out there that are telling me that, you know, with the cut and paste, it was the uh, the Chrome uh, OS that you were using or the Chrome browser you were using, it was different. No. On pure Android, 
the the cut and paste is exactly the same. I'm not going to go into it like I did there and go absolutely crazy, but uh, it is the same. So uh, if you guys want to see more on that and more in depth on it, we can definitely do that. But I'm impressed with the phone. They are letting me keep it, so I'm going to keep using it and trying it and, uh, you know, get a little more uh, up to date with it. And I'm definitely going to update it and, uh, and root it. And uh, have a lot of fun with that just to do it as a side phone. So, uh, again, I want to thank Cool Eye Cool for sending this out for review. And if you have any additional questions or anything that I didn't cover that you want to see, uh, comment down below. We'll uh, get a chat going. And uh, I'll help you guys answer it. And we'll go from there. I am going to do more things with this. I'm going to do camera shot tests and uh, a little more on the... Um, I don't know, maybe on the OS, uh, I do have that Pebble Watch, and uh, I know it has a lot more function on the Android, so it's nice that I have this and I can try that out. I'm not having a whole lot of luck with it at the moment, but uh, we'll get more into that later on. So you guys take it easy, have a good day, and I will talk to you later. See ya!